Hello everyone and welcome to the Animal Crossing and Mental Health Packs Online panel. Um, we are super appreciative of everybody who is tuning in today and just taking out a chunk of their time to listen to us ramble on about this amazing little game. Um, just kind of before we jump into anything, I want to put a little disclaimer out that none of us here are mental health professionals or experts, um, and so everything here is kind of just a discussion on the benefits that this game has brought us and how it's helped people in the community over the years. Um, so with all of that being said, um, I thought we could start with some little brief introductions on kind of like who we are and what we do and um, kind of just how Animal Crossing came into our lives. I can go if no one else wants to. Yeah, Let's go say. for it. Okay. Um, my name is Lucy Mutima. I am a 2D artist at a little studio called Ultimus. And outside of that, I'm an illustrator who likes to draw fun things. And I've been in game dev for a few years now. Awesome. Um. I will go then. Um, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I'm James Hester. I'm um, a games journalist that would like to make games one day, maybe, but right now I just write them about them a bunch. And I like them a bunch. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll go next. I am, my name is James Winbanks. Um, I uh, used to review video games for GameSpot um, and have written for IGN and Hyper back in the day. Uh, and now I just host a podcast called Video Games Small Talk. Hi everyone, I'm Lauren Clinic. I'm a CEO at Looney Interactive. We're making mobile games for women's well-being. And hello, my name's Sarah Crow. Um, I'm the community manager at Giant Army. And I'm also one of the co-owners of Patch Gaming. We're a mental health Discord support community. Nice. Um, and my name is Emily Scheel. I'm a freelance gaming writer and copywriter. Uh, a lot of the writing I do is about accessibility and the Oz indie game scene, so you can find me at Game Review, mostly. Um, so the first thing I kind of wanted to dive into was kind of what is it about Animal Crossing specifically that makes it so unique? Um, because I know that we've got other life simulators out there that still emulate those feelings of like accomplishment and goal setting and you know you've got like stardew valley and the sims and stuff like that but i feel like animal crossing is like its own genre if that makes sense um so i don't know what do you <clears throat> i think uh my personal take on it is games like stardew and harvest moon um are stressful to me personally because there's a time limit involved and everything runs on time I mean, Animal Crossing does as well to a point, but in Stardew, if you aren't here at X time, you might miss out on Y event. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Animal Crossing, I think, really, I can just go at my own pace and do what I want to do and play how I want to play. Like, if I want to be an interior designer, that's how I can focus my play style. Or if I want to make a cool flower garden, I can focus my play style on that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Animal Crossing, I always describe it to people who are like, what is this game as? It is a life sim for millennials who have always wanted to own a house and really enjoyed Beatrix Potter illustrations <laughs> as children. Um, because it's a game, like springboarding off what James was saying, it's a game without deadline. Mm. There are events, but there's no negative consequences if you do not participate. Mm -hmm. So unlike, say, real life, if you are a millennial and this is the year cursed year 2020, <laughs> there's no consequences to not engaging. And there's no consequences to engaging either. So in a world filled with deadlines, it's nice to have a safe, quiet at times, unless mm -hmm. KK is there on a Saturday space. <laughs> Party time. Where yeah, <laughs> where you can just engage and disengage without um without any negativity. Totally. Um Sorry, I thought someone was going to go. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, I think it's it's one of the only games that I can think of um, where it does kind of give you permission to set how your day is going to go. And I think that that is something that can sort of confuse people that are newcomers mm -hmm. to the series because I get, like, so many people saying, oh, like, what do I do? Or, like, you know, it's kind of boring. And I think 
that it can be kind of a foreign concept to people that haven't played it before but I think that's also one of the things about it that makes it so different absolutely Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean for that reason I'd almost put it closer to something like Minecraft than I would other games like Harvest Moon and Stardew Valley purely because it is really about playing how you want to play making your own fun without any sort of set you know like in Minecraft if you want to build a big cool tower go build a big cool tower if you want to build a whatever or if you want to just kill stuff that's fine and in Animal Crossing it's sort of similar you play how you want to play without you know you're never told this is the game this is how you're meant to play it Mm. I think that the comparison between Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing are very interesting because Mm. Stardew Valley was such an indie smash hit and a lot of people describe it as wholesome and you can do all of these banal very human mundane things like getting married or learn how to brew beer and things like that but Stardew is still like saddled with capitalism and Mm, Animal Crossing has got (laughs) some trappings of capitalism but it's still the cottage core ideal of like you could choose how much you want to engage with that Mm. or there's literally no punishment whereas stardew is like your cows they need food (laughs) (laughs) and you almost feel guilty in stardew valley when you're not doing the the things yeah and bells in animal crossing are that easy to come by it's like the capitalist ideal of like i've got a bajillion bells i'm gonna (laughs) buy a toaster Mm. While I can sell my trash in Stardew Valley, and I do, uh, I can. <laughs> I feel like I'm rewarded for selling, like going to those adorable little raccoon boys, uh, Tanuki boys, raccoon boys, um, Tanuki raccoon, beautiful animal, they sweet, sweet little lady sweet and creature, little, little gumdrops, sweet little lads, <laughs> um, and going to them, and I can hand them forty branches, and they're like, fantastic, you can have a thousand dollars, and. <laughs> It's it's yeah. money has no real value in this game, which completely feeds yeah. into what Laura was saying. <laughs> now that yeah. I'm saying this out loud, yeah. But you I get think, nothing yeah. but affirmation in yes. Animal Crossing. You wear a ridiculous outfit. Someone says that it's cool. You sell um, garbage, and they'll say thank you, and they'll give you yeah. money for it. Mm. Stardew Valley is literally like I busted my ass to brew this wine, and no <laughs> one tells me it's good. Yeah, I just namelessly get. <laughs> you money. really have to earn their affection as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. the mm. economic philosophy and like the emotional landscape of what's happening here in terms of, you know, commercial return and like what is the economy and what are we saying like mm. stardew valley has you know joja joja mart and all the evils of gentrification mm. and animal crossing just has the simple question are mortgages bad like it's so <laughs> bad. It's yes so always smaller. yes so much smaller <laughs> Oh, and mm-hmm. there's a great argument to be had about is Tom Nook a good guy or a bad guy and how he's <laughs> I mean, kind of reformed. Separate yeah. yeah, and like softened over time and his image has been quite rehabilitated. But <laughs> yeah, I do I do think that I, I want an economics major to talk to me about what these two different teams are saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. You found a way to make me engage with economics and that's <laughs> brilliant in of itself. <laughs> I think the fact that there is no pressure to it is kind of like one of the things that makes it a consistent talking point when it comes to the connection it has with mental well-being mm. um, because it, it does create those routines and, and that feeling of like safety as well. Um, and like it's for me it's always I'm always like you know it's there if and when I want to come back to it it might it might be like covered in weeds but Mm. (laughs) it'll still be like my space I mean um have you guys found that it's helped you at all in times of stress or things like that to be Um, honest that element of coming back to weeds and my animals being like where have you been I missed you is like what's the number one reason that I haven't played in a month um, because and the, the longer I leave it, the guiltier I feel. Mm. So I almost feel like if I go back, I have to just nuke everything in order to not feel guilty. <laughs> mm. And I don't want to do that. Is that so that I guess can, it has that, that element game, as well. Does, that the, does the game push that on you, though? Or is that just sort of coming from your sort of own internalized, I think oh, it's I've, I've set this aside. Past and I've... Animal Crossing games really ramp up the guilt. Like, the animals, when you talk to them, will be like, "What? where have you been? We missed that. You haven't been around. Do, do you not, like, are you not our friend now? Like, animals have said that in the past. Apparently, it's better in this one. But, like, I've that pure that. thing of letting down my bestest friends in the whole world 
and the all fact the pressure that they know in the world is on this game now. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so oh, no. sorry to think that they miss me that much, and then I just make them miss me more, and I feel worse, and it's the cycle of I can't go back because I feel so guilty. So you used to, like, and and uh, I think that's totally valid because that's something that uh, a lot of people uh, I know um, have. Uh, spoken about in the past as well but then there's also an aspect to that where if you know if you talk to them again afterwards it's like nothing's happened yeah which everything goes back yeah. to uh, which you know it it um and maybe that's just sort of pushing a little bit on the edges of of the game part of it but also um i think that kind of diffuses any of or at least for me you know it diffuses any of that tension that i may have felt around yeah. um oh have i neglected these characters at all and because i th- i think and that's something that we haven't quite touched on yet mm. is that i think the characters in animal crossing take a lot of the 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 brunt of um where the charm in this game comes from mm-hmm. um and which mm-hmm. i think also just sort of ties into um you know, it's like aesthetic. Aesthetically, it's pleasing to look at. Like, it's the characters are all wonderfully drawn and 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 uh, creating this like this cartoon, almost toy like aesthetic. And it's it, it kind of provides almost this like slightly reductive, but this uh, like almost dollhouse esque like feel to it, where you know um, you don't have the choice of uh, well within the the confines of the game, you don't necessarily have a choice of which characters come to your island, and mm. but you you can manipulate the island and you can um, do things within this island and and interact with those characters in a way that uh, that feels kind of natural. Yeah. And I think a big part of that, um, uh, you know, even just seeing them, you know, they have little a- little. Um, actions and things that they'll do you'll you'll see them running around in the square and you know enjoying themselves and just sort of Belting out their rad little fun tunes. Or, exactly <laughs> or they'll be mm. like there'll be a group of them singing like or you know um they'll be chatting to each other and if you go up and um take part in any of those conversations they're often really charming and, and, mm. yeah they're, it's often some of the best dialogue in the game mm-hmm. um and i i think uh, a lot of those points for me um it, it's kind of an amalgamation of all of those things as to why Animal Crossing has such a unique flavour mm. to it. Um, and I think that's a big part of why I found it really beneficial. Um, and just quickly, I want to touch on something else um, while I'm going at full, ste- full steam here. <laughs> um, yes! The, uh, <laughs> there is a sense of structure to it, um, mm. which uh, is around, you know, you know that KK is going to be there every mm. Saturday. Or mm-hmm. on a Sunday, if there's a bug off, you know that there's going to be four bug offs every year. Mm-hmm. You know that there's going to be, you know, red might show up at some point. And th- there, there are like some random events, obviously, but I think those are also good because then you have a bit of a surprise as mm-hmm. well. And so there is, in some cases, I think, um, you know, having that structure around I can go and collect my four or five minerals today if that's what I want to do, or I can go and. Um, I can go diving and collect, you know, a bunch of uh, sea creatures that I don't have in the museum or what have you. There's all these little tasks that you can put together that help, um, uh, personally help someone like me who um, who has suffered from pretty serious anxiety in the past just to knuckle down and focus in on a task. Mm. And that I know uh, personally for me helps, really helps pull me out of a, a funk or, um, you know, especially if like one of the, funny things I get with my anxiety is that like the brain just starts running away with ideas and if you can refocus Mm. that Mm. uh, refocus that energy um, I've always found like Animal Crossing to be really good for that Mm. totally and it really it really kind of adds to like sorry to cut you off but um, I was just going to say it kind of like that's kind of why it fits into that genre of like mindful gaming as well Mm. Mm. Um, Mm. so go Lauren or talking Sarah. about anxiety <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just briefly, uh, briefly just to touch on anxiety yeah. with what james is saying i'm dubbing in the whole chat we are yes. anxious little macarons <laughs> and, uh, sorry we sorry don't, <laughs> and like we don't aspire to feeling powerful like with the games that we really like in terms of the emotional rewards that anxious profile people go for we mm. just want to feel safe and animal mm. crossing is physiologically and emotionally an extremely safe game so it does Mm. a lot of heavy lifting when Mm. you're in uncertain 
anxiety inducing circumstances mm -hmm. when every day is a new horror every day is a bad news day animal crossing has got nothing but a nice letter from your mum and an ugly jumper from a dude on <laughs> yeah. the island yeah i mean like every That's single it. animal on this island absolutely loves you to pieces and thinks you are the hottest shit exactly <laughs> like, sometimes <laughs> Uh, Animal Crossing is a game so specific in that for my very anxious brain that Lauren is rightfully to call us all out on. Um, sometimes I don't know that I need this. My therapist has never told me that I need this. Sometimes I need a little blue bear to tell me about like the bugs that talk to them in their room, yeah. which is just something I did not know I needed. Um, <laughs> and yeah. then other times, like to have that, and um, for me as well, like with James, having. I call Animal Crossing, there was this thing that my father once said to me um, after I had a very uh, anxious week um, about an assignment I had to do in high school, and I call it an elephant burgers game, which is deeply upsetting for me as a vegetarian. Um, <laughs> He said, basically, the elephant burgers theory, I've got no idea if my dad made this up or if this is an actual thing or if he's reappropriating another great moral lesson. But basically, the elephant burgers thing is that this elephant dies at this village and they're all like, how are we going to move this elephant? It's cutting off our main track to the road. Our industries are failing, yada, yada, yada. And then one dude comes up with the ingenious idea of like, no, we can't move this whole thing at once. That's ridiculous. What if instead we made it, put, broke it up and made little tiny things out of it and just tackle them one by one so they made elephant burgers? Not grim. <laughs> not, not grim at all. At all. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I, I do not support the poaching industry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> PSA. Important message. PSA. Um, mm. But yeah, uh, that's sort of the takeaway from it is when you're feeling anxious and you're feeling super overwhelmed because it's like, oh, holy shit, I've got all these things I have to do. The world is on fire. Nothing mm. is okay. Hmm. I can yeah. focus on and I can go, hey, I can, like, go hit this rock and I can collect these yeah. three, like, bits of clay. And, oh, is that Blair the Squirrel? I'll go talk to Blair. I haven't talked to Blair the Squirrel yet. Totally. And you can go over and you just break it down into little bits. And then before you know it, for me anyway, and I hope that a lot of people can relate, all of a sudden I feel much calmer because it, like, that to-do list that doesn't exactly exist and those small little tasks I've done yeah. have like helped me refocus, help me recenter and help me realize problems not so big, y'all. Yeah. And also just to, yeah. to jump off of that a little bit, it's like there are these kind of like main goals within the game. Like I mean there's mm. paying off your home loan and like what what are the other kind of big uh ones? the museum, I guess museum, filling up the museum. Yeah, like kind um, of um, getting the buildings getting a, upgraded and stuff. But it's know, like, island, yeah. Just and it's of, like you like, always little... kinda know in the back of your head that they're there, but there's no rush to get them completed at any time frame and yeah. it's just it's great. Um I wanted to yeah. ask yeah. No one ever Sarah. comes hunting for you or anything. So No, <laughs> no. Yeah, like you're, you're never No, no you're, scorpions. Like, yeah, yeah no Tom Nook doesn't feel like <laughs> with the baseball bats, just like show up, you load up the game, and there's just these two guys with baseball bats standing outside your house. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, one fear. Cross over with Hotline Miami. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> um, I can't wait for the GDA patch. <laughs> oh my god. The Doom patch. Amazing. Um, I would love it. <laughs> no, but um, I did want to ask Sarah, I mean, I know you've um, kind of done a lot of work with mental health communities and things like that so have there been any specific instances that you can remember where animal crossing has helped people in those communities at all or heaps so mm. so many um i think one of the biggest things is you can't win the game mm. so because it's a continual small victories thing mm. you're always getting that sense of wow i've achieved something Mm. even if it's really small and for a lot of people having those little victories just really helps them keep carrying on yeah. um i think another thing that's so special about playing animal crossing within a supportive community is that you're allowed to be yourself in a way that you might not usually in real life mm. so if you're someone who identifies a certain way you might decide, hey, I'm going to wear a dress today or I'm going to try that short hairstyle mm. or I'm going to dye my hair pink. And for a lot of people, they're not things you can do 
just out in public, but it's a safer space to experience those things and those changes. Mm. And I've seen people have found that really valuable. Mm. It is fascinating the social language that games develop, um, and I think the way that uh, like addresses are perfectly a really good example of that like mm-hmm. I know you know myself I'm pretty much like uh, I'll wear blacks and greys and occasionally <laughs> blues and but in Animal Crossing I'm wearing all sorts of colourful shit yeah. because like why not it looks and like a lot of that stuff really looks quite amazing and, and it's just that is the kind of expression that just happens in that world and so it, it, if it feels like it comes a lot more naturally as well um, rather than <clears throat> you know having to swallow it up and, and, and step outside into the, the, the real world <laughs> and, and do all of that stuff in, you know, yeah. which and, and, and I suppose yeah. hopefully like the idea is that maybe this could, maybe this could lead to you uh, building up that courage and becoming mm. uh, and, 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 and blooming <coughs> into that person or, or something that you know you want it, to be, you know? Yeah, it could be a little bit of a trial run sure. for these yeah. new changes in your life. And, and there's a lot yeah. that I want to say about the queering of Animal Crossing because <laughs> mm-hmm. in terms yes. of how they have <laughs> taken gender locking off of clothing, mm-hmm. the way that they will let you use a magic wand to change your physical quote unquote gender presentation. Mm-hmm. The way they made CJ so and slight. Flick boyfriends. Exactly. Oh CJ God. and Flick in English can easily yeah. be read as being boyfriends, which is really special. And the way that this has a um, has a a parallel with the rise of cottagecore as a movement in the hellscape that is 2020 (laughs) and how cottagecore is a really queer friendly sort of culture Mm. as well where Mm. it's an idea of a nostalgia for something that you didn't have it's an idealization of like a low tech world which i think is much more interesting than a like a low magic kind of game space and it's just so interesting to be like this is a space where no one will hurt you for what you want like no one will hurt you for what you look like and what's really nice you know as an anxious person in this year is that my life is actually a lot closer to animal crossing than it is to dragon age inquisition you know and i love both of those games (laughs) so animal crossing is a nice reminder that you can just like have that little moment in your day or just focus on a small group of people that love you you don't need the approval of a whole country or a whole world kind of thing but you can just have a little crew and you can support each other and I think that's just real freaking nice. Yeah. <laughs> totally agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Agreed. Um, and I think it also uh, kind of, it gives you this autonomy as well and like control over your environment um, which is, I think has kind of gotten away from us a lot this year so it mm. it really like could not have been released at a better yeah. time. Yeah, I mean you have more control than ever now. You can like terraform the entire island Mm. if you want you can control mountains or you can just control what your house looks like you have as much or as little control as you would like yeah i think as well uh, sorry go no i was sorry i thought you were anxious i'm so sorry everyone for just for just talking i'm sorry (laughs) i'm sorry for being here (laughs) in a world there is something and i'm sure someone much more articulate than i can articulate this um, in a much more succinct way. (laughs) Um, But there's something to be said in a time when we are experiencing an unprecedented global trauma on several scales. Mm. Everything is so out of our control. There's so much, especially in Western world, so much political unrest that as a, uh, as a tiny anxious person, I feel so unable to affect for so many different reasons. And then on top of that, you are a, um, you are someone I don't want to generalize too much about the player base but someone generally under the age of 40 often like the game has a huge resonance with uh, LGBTQI plus people as well and all of that that you can finally have a tiny bit of control and you are not punished for having that control in Mm. fact it's treated it's encouraged don't get me wrong but no one bats a whole lot of no one bats an eyelid at it so much it's just so normalized that yeah of course the, you're changing the island that's really great that you're doing that mm. yeah i'm just gonna go over here and sweep uh <laughs> while you do that yeah um 
there is something to be said for having that much control so normalized and made so mundane mm. in a time when everything feels wildly out of control. Yeah. Mm. And I, gosh, really did release at the absolute perfect time. Definitely. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. I find it interesting the user interface and the structure of games that Animal Crossing misses and mm. how much UI UX testing would have gone into it because even in Animal Crossing you can sometimes pick up quests where you know it's like okay you need to go and place uh, place a building lot or you've picked up someone's book and someone's like this isn't my book I think it's Frank's book but you don't get a, a UI pop-up saying this is your quest and here's a reminder mm -hmm. like it's literally just self-determined keep it in your mind kind of thing mm -hmm. but then there is really conscious ui for new additions like crafting for example and for me the crafting edition has been really gratifying because i'm a complete resource hoarder and the feeling of comforting abundance that i get by having way too fucking much of <laughs> yeah that i will never use all of yep and i'm like mm, you added my extra <laughs> my extra like anxious that. thing mm. that's so good but the way mm. that crafting has actually added to the reasons why you would play with other players because previously yeah. i wouldn't play with strangers very much i wouldn't bring strangers into my island but this is the first time that i a uh, you know a comparatively geriatric woman has gone onto Discord to find people to trade my spare DIY recipes with, or someone who is playing in the different hemisphere so I can get the sweet sweet cherry blossom furniture and things like that. <laughs> and the additions that they've made have been so good for me to have a totally optional but purely nice uh, relationship with other players. And how hard it is to grief other players or be horrible yes. to other players mm. is also really fucking nice because mm. I avoid the shit out of multiplayer for that reason mm. in other I mean games. it's still very possible unfortunately <laughs> you but, can still yeah. do it but they have designed and controlled for a lot of mm. the a lot of the mm -hmm. easiest ways to do mm. that if you want to be nasty you're going to have to go out of your way and maybe because yeah. there's so many steps to be an absolutely vile human mm. maybe along the way you will stop and think about what you're actually saying mm. although I gotta and admit I if you manage clever to grief me in Animal Crossing of all games while I'm on your island, I'm probably going to be more impressed by that, that you have managed to try mm. attempt to annoy me in this little wholesome <laughs> game. In my haven. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but it's really Like, if true. you can actually do something detrimental to my gameplay, like, okie dokie, good for mm. you, buddy. Obviously, you needed to get it out, so yep. okay. That's how Animal Crossing players are. They're a bunch of totally... <laughs> sickly pleasant people yeah <laughs> but it's also it's such a testament to how welcoming the community is as well yeah. i mean this mm -hmm. is um with new horizons this is kind of the first time that i personally have really gotten into multiplayer because mm -hmm. um, i remember like I, I used to have wild world that was my first i've talked about this on james's podcast but that was my first um like entry to the series and I used to like occasionally play it if, if a friend had the game or if I was like over at somebody's house but I feel like this year I just got like bombarded with like group chats and events and Facebook groups and I was very into it so um, yeah, yeah so it's the way that nice. the game lets you design emergent games the way people are like mm -hmm. let's have a treasure hunt and like mm -hmm. I hosted a fashion show like it had so many things that let it be a playground kind of a situation yeah. where mm. you can play super structured if you want to and that's super valid or you can have a complete concept of my island is actually a murder mystery and actually mm. just go and do that and then how much the community celebrates someone doing something very fucking bizarre and specific mm. with their game and I'm yeah. also very much looking forward to seeing how they keep adding more content you know mm. more events more updates we've already had some really significant fun little updates that have brought me back and you know i've played like i think about 400 hours of animal crossing so far and right now Same. i'm not on a daily pattern but i am yeah. very happy to be coming back to it occasionally and having it just be there when i super need it and i think that that's beautiful a game mm. that isn't like you know, there's only one good way to play it. Like, I think a lot of mm. new Animal Crossing players got very overwhelmed thinking like, I want the game to go faster, or mm. when do I know that I'm done? Or people feeling bad for pausing, you know, and there were things to say mm. about uh, 
telling anxious people that you're disappointed in them. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> do not recommend. <laughs> do not recommend. But, I, but still, I think a lot of us will still keep coming back to it, you know, which I think will be very, very nice. And I think we will see some significant updates come. So I'm looking forward to seeing that continue. Yeah, me too. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm super excited for more updates. I mean, even the dream thingy at the moment, like, I haven't tried it yet, but that is my yeah. number one reason I want to go back and have a look at the moment, because the idea of, like, a more accessible way to see what everyone's doing, because that's mm. my highlight. I love just going on tours of different islands and mm. getting a yeah. this look at how, how other people live. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I think it's also, like... I am one of those people with Animal Crossing where I'll tend to look at what somebody else is doing and just be like, my island isn't good enough or, you know, I don't have this and I don't have that. But I think if if we look at it like not so much comparing but just taking inspiration from, it could really, like, change the way Mm. we interact with each other in the community and stuff. That's something that my my, uh, wife does a lot. She plays Mm. a lot of Animal Crossing um, and... Uh, like way more than me at this point and um, she's like she had an incredible mm-hmm. island at one stage and then just decided to go and rebuild it and she's kind of been in the process of that for a little while now but I think like uh, when it comes to the uh, community and the multiplayer aspect of like uh, you know going to people's islands and seeing their inspiration and seeing um, their bursts of creativity, which uh, are often really fan- like fantastic. Like there are some incredible islands that people have made mm. and some wonderful displays of creativity, which um, I often feel like games, uh, especially these kinds of games that, that, that give you a little bit of space but like to, to, to create something in, but, but they give you a very specific set of rules to work within often bring out some of like the, the more creative ideas. Um, and I think some of the creative ideas that we've seen people express have been really um, fantastic like in terms of um, you know like dig sites or people holding uh, swap meets or something I know that's something that you've done a, a bunch Lauren and um, mm-hmm. a few other folks and mm-hmm. um, I think that aspect of it like uh, that multiplayer slash community aspect of it really shines through in this um, in Particular, particularly in, in New Horizons. I know there were like flashes of this in New Leaf, but um, New Horizons does it so like so much. Well, I mean, it's, it's built for the system, right? Like the Switch mm. is kind of built for that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, that aspect of it um, has been such a huge part of uh, what has defined what Animal Crossing is like for mm. us and for me. Um, in particular, uh, in that it's become, you know, for a while there, it became a, the, the game that we use to reach out to friends and, and to talk to people and communicate and just sort of feel like we we're hanging out. Um, because for a while there, it was the only way that you could do that. Um, and for some, <laughs> still for is some here. of us, it still is. Exactly, mm, yeah. For many of us in the world, it still is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, you know, um, yeah, there's a lot to be said about, uh, I think, the community side of, of Animal Crossing and, and where they take it as well, as well as where, you know, the, the game's sort of updates and, and things could take it to. It's been really fa- fascinating sort of seeing that grow. Mm. Have any mm. of you guys... 20, sorry. it's really... Uh, sorry, my lag keeps on me. No, 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 speak no, over you people. go, you go. Ah. <laughs> but in, in 2020, it's extremely important to let go of the idea of achieving or getting good at something or doing Mm. well at something right now and just retooling all expectations to be around survival looking after the people that you can look after looking after yourself and animal crossing is one of those games that just really firmly lets you do that there's lots of power fantasy games there's lots of games with leaderboards and things like that but when you just need to make it small make it little make it nice you know, mm. like the message in Animal Crossing is do what makes you happy. Like that's mm. literally the only way to do the right thing in Animal Crossing. And, you know, living in 2020 is 100% the same way. <laughs> <laughs> I, totally I think agree. that's just so, such a key point of why it's a good game because like it's, it's all about doing what makes you happy. Like 
that's 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 the entire game. Other video games will be like, hey, here's Jungai, go bust up some demons or whatever. Mm. And Animal Crossing is just like, no, nah, what what do you like? What do you like to do? Yeah. And I like that. I, games need to ask me what I like more. It's a two-way street. <laughs> and it's true. Like, and it and it makes you ask yourself, like, what do I need in this moment? Because mm. I think, like, some days you'll play it and you'll go, oh, today I'm going to do, like, a whole terraform, you know, job and, and do this whole section of my island and make this big mm. project. And then some days mm. you're like, I just want to pick my weeds. And I think it kind of helps you tune into what you need mentally as well in this, like, weird way. Absolutely. It's a game that it's a game that Definitely. celebrates the moment. Mm. You know, it, it's sort of it, and and some people, I think, for those of us who've played a lot of Animal Crossing, this can grow. Uh, this can sort of grind on you just a little bit, but <laughs> it does take its time to do things, and it takes its time to explain things to you, and it really keeps you in that moment, whether you want to be in there or not. You know, <laughs> yeah. uh, and in some in some cases, I think that's good. In some cases, I think that that's you know that's helpful for people mm. and you know just to take that second just to let's just uh, slow down and just mm. go through let's go through the dialogue the tension <laughs> and the release and the yeah. task and the reward goes at different momentums in animal crossing mm -hmm. in a very purposeful very satisfying way where you'll collect things and then sell them when you want to and get that kind of reward but yeah. past a certain time at night, you'll have to put it in a box or something and mm -hmm. get paid differently and things like that. So it's still putting a little bit of gentle pressure that maybe there's a better time slightly, but it doesn't matter too much. Mm -hmm. And then something that's really exciting, like uh, shooting stars and then mm -hmm. doing your little wish on a shooting star, but you have to wait until the next morning to collect the star. So there's, there's such a range or even like you're excited for the next villager to come or you're excited for the village you hate to move out, but you're going to have to wait <laughs> yeah. quite a long time. Or even like happen. seasonal events, yeah, like seasonal the snowmen stuff. and stuff, mm. which I never got right, but you know. <laughs> yes. It's mm -mm. not about getting them right. It's about having a fun conversation with a snowman. But I want the item. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm. That's so, I think that a game that makes you pause mm. is such an important, beautiful thing that a game is able to do mm. for me um if i not to get vulnerable on main but um <laughs> for me uh two key components of my therapy has been over the past few years and understanding um my casserole of mental health um, <laughs> it is not delicious i call um, mine a cocktail Oh, that's, that's fun. There's a I little will. bit of lime in there. I'll let you use that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, one of them has been, it's okay not to do this right now. Mm. And that has been as a very type A personality, a Leo, whatever you that has been one of the hardest things I'm still learning and still unpacking. It's, mm. it's okay to wait and sometimes you have to wait for the thing to actually happen. It doesn't have to happen right this second. Mm. Animal Crossing is a game that embodies that part of cognitive therapy so well and so subtly in a way. It's even though it's the, like a core loop, it's so incredible yeah. how it does that. Mm. The second one being, um, you don't have, it, it kind of feeds into the first one. So the first one's about pausing and waiting. Mm. The second one is, you can enjoy this moment. It's okay to take five minutes, a few hours, a day, a week to just enjoy what's happening now and just make peace with mm. what's happening and just pause, reflect and ask yourself the question of how does this moment make me feel and just enjoy that. Yeah. I cannot think of another game that makes me do that. Yeah. Um, I struggle to think of many real life examples that make me do that. <laughs> um, totally agree. But I think that's something that Animal Crossing just truly succeeds at and has succeeded at for me in teaching me those lessons. That's one of the things that I feel, and I'm not judging the time skippers. I want to put it out there that I do not care if you time skip. This is not shade. Um, no, but I think that that's something that people who do try time travel miss out on is like having those moments yeah. of like, I waited for this and 
it, it makes it all the more special when you have waited so long for that thing. It's also, and this is so niche to me as a game developer, I sit at a desk 8 to 5, 30, 8 to 4, 30, 8 to 4 o'clock most days. I work with screens. I am I am now mostly a digital artist. I My passion is all on a screen. And I usually sit, I'm stationary with these screens for a very long time. Mm. It is so nice that this game is like, not really anything you can do else today after like sometimes 15 minutes. I can, the relief that it gives me <laughs> is, <laughs> and I know that's very specific to my situation and my setup, but I have seen a lot of other like artists talk about it online where it's like, as digital artists, there's now talks of like, how is our screen time and our desire to share constantly mm. what we're working on? How is that affecting us mentally? And yeah. it is very refreshing to have a game where it's like, actually, man, you don't have to spend 10 hours playing with me. Yeah. Actually, man, like you might rack up 400 plus hours on me. It's not because you've spent 24 hours day after day playing me. It's because you've checked in like mm. for sometimes Can't. only 10 minutes. Yeah. Can't grind to get good kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. There is no getting good yes. at Animal Crossing. Like mm. even if you make it an absolutely beautiful town, that's like more of a reflection of you than being good at the game. The real yeah. get good was the good mental health practices you learned along the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I played 600 hours of Animal Crossing. What the fuck is up? Yo. <laughs> Check out my oh, shit. Check it's out my frame perfect more. Animal Crossing speedrun. <laughs> I, I find it really interesting because I think we're all people that work in fairly creative industries and a lot of the time when we do have to use the creative sides of our brains it is to like meet a goal or a deadline or you know if it's work related it's it's something that is like structured and that has to be done in a certain way but I think with Animal Crossing it's understandable that we would lean towards it because it's like this it's like Lauren said, like it's a playground, you know, it's just this space that encourages creativity. It's kind of similar to um, how I felt playing Dreams this year. Oh, yeah, that's if good. If anybody else actually. plays yeah. that, I want to check that yeah. out a lot. Dreams yeah. oh, the is a great so example good. of that. Mm. Mm. There's a lot of uh, excellent stuff in Dreams. It's um, mm. there's, uh, Actually, there's a bunch of like really great games that have just come out, like that are really perfect for this sort of, I've been playing a lot of Microsoft Flight Simulator. <laughs> Oh, how is that it is like not to derail this but <laughs> it is just beyond anything i could have imagined it might be the most incredible technological achievement i've experienced like wow. just oh. it's it's really really hard to describe but if i promise you if you get a chance to play it just get up in the air put on the put on all the assists it doesn't matter get up in the air and just go and fly over your house and you'll know wow. what i'm talking about can oh isabel be my co-pilot <laughs> is there a mod <laughs> yes for that? <laughs> she's, let's let's ask her. She's right here. I think she's. Uh, she's quiet. She's got no further announcements for today. Oh, well, oh, will well, there be a shooting star show really tonight? Practical, very intense <laughs> flight simulator game, and then you're like, and here is my dog cushion. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the duality, oh, yeah. Of man. The duality of man. The duality of man. The Doom Isabel crossover. Oh, yes. Wow. Oh. My little marketer brain was so tingly about that. I loved it. Oh, so I, I can imagine. So much. Mm. I still love it to this day. Like, it, is. Mm. Oh, it, it just Delicious. delights me. When the two brands decide that they can play nice with each other and that there is little crossover when it comes to the intensity of their core fans, so they mm. can just safely play and support each other without the executives coming down and saying that you're splitting your audience. Yeah. Bravo, everybody. Bravo. I swear it reminded me of like when Old Town Road came out. And like all of the <laughs> people in hip hop and country were just banding together for that small Aww. moment in life. And it was like, this so is, true. This is what we need. That's if what we not, need. If it's not too like gross or gauche, I wanted to trust on that brand crossover because I think mm. there's something so, if I may give two examples, but there's something to be said for the utter unified delight Animal Crossing fans felt when the Doom guy and Isabel were sort of confirmed as friends <gasps> versus, yes. versus yes. Ca like KFC and Wendy's going, we have an island and you can visit it for free chicken. Mm. Um, and just kind of 
trying to understand and missing that mark a little bit. I know mm. some people were excited about it, but I have my own opinions like about a that. Utopian mm. nightmare to me. Yes, <laughs> I feel it's like you know that natural sort. Like it occurred very naturally, just because mm. their release dates were on the same thing. Whereas yeah. you know, marketing is always going to be marketing. What I, I really loved was the fan communities coming together. A lot of the yes. fan art and stuff around that, yeah. like Isabel yeah. sitting on Doom Guy's shoulder yeah. and him showing off, him showing her like a triple barreled shotgun, and you know, yeah. just like those like this, this this fantastic crossing of worlds. That stuff I yeah. found really really wholesome and fantastic. And I mean, for me personally, it's funny because Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal give me very similar feelings to playing Animal Crossing because oh, I played no. both. Of- <laughs> Um, but playing the recent Doom games on easy in a really low risk environment Mm. and just tearing through demons with like I'm very unlikely to die I can just tear through demons with a bunch of ammo and I know I'm very safe doing so and it gives you that sort of powerful almost relaxing sensation Mm. that I get from playing Animal Crossing Mm. yeah that's interesting control of my situation and the yeah. fun I have of like mm. tearing demons apart is the same fun I have building a really cute bathroom. Yeah, yeah. it sounds to me like that all that all kind of revolves around control and, mm. and that feeling of like I have the the power to make choices here and 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 I will be the one to affect these choices. Mm. How, what I'm think? really looking forward to seeing mm. like the enormous success of Animal Crossing and how that then trends and influences games that are coming out Mm. designers that will have this as one of their really formative games that they played when they were in that teenage band of Mm. you know sink it right into my lizard brain and i think a lot of designers are realizing that there are systems and things that you can purposefully do that will give certain emotional rewards or certain emotional states that might be quite um, unexpected and like Mm. Animal Crossing fans can be very intense about the collection drive or about Mm. their creativity and the the play times really destroy the idea of like what is a hardcore gamer and things Mm. like that as well so Mm. I think it helps game developers let go and to just be like a wholesome game doesn't mean that there has to be flowers and colour and an emotionally safe game doesn't mean that there's no killing, but it's all the context of like, mm. how does the universe treat you? How are you positioned in the universe? Like, mm. are you centered? Are you a hero? Are you an NPC kind of a situation? But it's mm. been such a hugely successful game that I'm already seeing deals get approved for things that are a lot more wholesome and mm. publishers that are like, well, I didn't grow up idealizing this, but it does well commercially. Mm. And so as much as capitalism sucks, Games like these being successful will have very interesting benefits mm. as we go. I feel like we're already uh, yeah. seeing it too, like the wholesome direct and stuff like that. We're already seeing wholesome as a genre explode, basically. Mm. It's been really wonderful for me um, to talk to about people who don't necessarily play games. When I tell people who aren't absorbing games 24-7 like we are about Animal Crossing and I explain it to them that it's a game without uh, it's a game without violence and it's not like uh, another game I'm very passionate about The Sims it's not like that all of a sudden people become very interested and engaged Mm. it's not an alienating thing as much as we like to think that games are for everybody and for the record they absolutely should be there's no reason why video games can't be for everybody Mm. it we have to admit as developers, marketers, and um, journals and personalities affiliated with games and who work in this creative space, how the culture we've cultivated around video games and the stories that are outside of our bubble, the ones that a mainstream audience thinks that we are telling, are quite alienating. Mm. Like, as a queer woman growing up in a town with barely any internet, I had nothing, I had no reason and no desire to ever play Call of Duty, which was like one of those big games at the time that was like, this is video game. Mm. So telling people that a game like Animal Crossing exists starts to open those doors and starts to have those conversations. I I got my, like, I got my therapist excited over it, <laughs> which <laughs> feels very oh, fitting for this I love that. A lot of but therapists also- have been educated this year on Animal Crossing, it's safe to say. I would like to take this moment to apologise for the whole profession. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it makes me really excited because now that we're getting mainstream audiences mm. who don't 
who aren't hardcore gamer TM to start to mm. understand and to play these games, what is that going to green light 10 years from now? What is going to be yeah. those big AAA milestone games? And already you're seeing that influence bleed into things. And I don't want to encase this panel in amber for future archaeologists, but there were some games announced this morning as part of a DC Comics event. And already I can see influences from games that aren't necessarily triple A beat em ups mm -hmm. trailers for these games that I never would have hoped to have seen ten years ago. And I really, I really hope and I truly believe games like Animal Crossing are gonna lead to some very exciting, bigger, green lit, uh bells and whistles cinematic style games like ten years yeah, ago. Agree. And I know that we're totally. running out of time, but if you are someone that has a switch and you've played a lot of Animal Crossing and then you're looking for the next thing to do. I'm really excited for Best Friend Forever coming Big out. Big news, yes! yes. 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 Well. yes. So, oh, I'm so More excited. wholesome, more colorful, August 27. Mm. Yeah. It's so soon. Kick cheese ball or bust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, it, yeah, so if, you, if you do have Animal Crossing and you're looking for the next thing to pick up, a lot of people have gotten a Switch for Animal Crossing. And the Nintendo Switch is a great console for more wholesome, more tender, nice, colorful, mm. sweet experiences mm. as well mm. springboarding off that i'd also like to recommend a short hike which is oh, so good. Good. Oh, yes. Yes. i still need to play oh, it oh, I, I admit i still need to play it but i watched my husband finish start and finish this game in about 45 minutes last night and it was the most wholesome and pure experience big animal crossing vibes mm. you are an adorable little bird girl yeah, and, and the music is so want? similar to it's so amazing i just Oh, I, I would play it. I, would play it. <laughs> I think you know what? I think it speaks to what games are capable of in a broader sense. Um, mm. And I think that while the conversation is shifting, it's like still, it is still like kind of hard for a lot of people to understand that like this game mm. about living in this anthropomorphic town is like so popular, you know? Um, but we are seeing that. Games like A Short Hike and Animal Crossing are gaining just as much popularity as the AAA titles, um, and people are just as excited about them, if not like crazier. So, <laughs> um, if we talk, yeah. oh sorry, oh, I no, was going to say if we talk, <laughs> if we talk about, um, if we talk about games like Fine Art, I'm going to put on uh, my my art my art school hat for five minutes. If we talk <laughs> about games, how we talk about Fine Art periods, which mm. I find it very ridiculous that we don't, but that's a whole other talk. Um, if we talk about games like Art Periods, at the moment, in a mainstream border pop culture context, we really only have art one art period. And I know that's going to make a lot of people very upset. But put yourself in the shoes of a 45-year-old woman who's someone's mum who has a 14-year-old boy. Mm -hmm. To you, there is one video game, and it's shooty, shooty, looty, looty. <laughs> There's nothing else. Mm -hmm. It's kind of ridiculous that we only have one art period. Mm. But if we start to look at games now, maybe this is something else. Like if we borrow the term cottagecore, this is us moving into another genre of painting. Maybe this is us moving into our impressionist period. And mm. I think if we start treating games like that, I think we're going to get some more diverse, more interesting, not only visuals as an artist, I have to put that out there, but just games as a whole. Mm. And I think, yes, that's very, very exciting. Totally. Um, I think we are coming up to time now. Um, does anybody have kind of anything else that they want to kind of voice before we do the wrap up? Or Other than <laughs> I think the sweaters in Able Sisters, mm. the fashion in this game did not have to go as hard as it went. But so good. I'm so <laughs> glad it did. Agreed. I'm delivering looks like I've never delivered in real life. <laughs> Um, awesome. Um, so, where can everybody find you guys? So, I would say that Twitter is the easiest for me. So, I am at Lauklin, L A U R C L I N N. Mm -hmm. I am on Twitter as well. That's the best place to find me, also. And you can find me using the moniker Lucy Crime Fighter, um, spelled L U C Y C R I M E, fighter without the E at the end. 
Uh, you can find uh, me at J underscore Swimbanks, or you can find uh, my podcast, Video Game Small Talk, on, I don't know, anywhere you can find podcasts. It is an oh. excellent podcast. <laughs> it's a very good podcast. You can find me at, 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 at Steam Jamboree. <laughs> one at, one at preferably, but at Steam Jamboree on Twitter. You can find me at Sarah underscore Crow, like Russell Crow has an E at the end. <laughs> um, I'm also, I'll give a quick shout out to Patch, my community. They might be watching this if they are, hello. Uh, when this airs, we're just about to hit our five year anniversary, which is cool. Oh, congrats. So if you want Yay! Um, a nice, wholesome mental health community, come hang out. It's wonderful. Awesome. I just might do that. Thank you. <laughs> um, You're all welcome. <laughs> and you can find me at Emmy underscore Sheel, E M I underscore S H I E L. Um, and I mainly live on Twitter, so that is my home. Um, awesome. You should find healthier places to live. Yeah, <laughs> look. <laughs> it's where I get all my only. news from at this point. Yeah. I'm trying to yeah. give TikTok might be the problem. Go. <laughs> well, Emily, thank you so much for putting this together. Amen. It's been a pleasure. Thank and thank you so much to PAX for the opportunity. Thank you, PAX, and thank you, Emily. Yeah, have a thank great you, time. Emily, Bye. and PAX, and Animal Crossing, and everybody here. Bye. Bye. Thank you for Bye. watching. <laughs>